Okay, so further completely unnecessary discussion on triangle currency laws, in particular the SSA law, or the non-law, I should say. Uh, I'm also going to include a game show at the end. So here are all our triangle currency laws that we learn at GCSE, SSS, SAS, and so on. Um, and then you're taught not to quote SSA or AAA. Now, it's this one, like I said, that I'm going to be talking about particularly in this video. Um, a quick change of perspective before I do, though, or a clarification at least. When I say congruency, what I mean is a unique construction. So, for example, when I say SSS is a congruency law, what I'm saying is that this triangle, which is which has all three sides known, is a unique construction of triangle. Like, if you have a triangle of side 5, 11, and 9, this is the only way to draw it. Sure, you could reflect it, and you could rotate it, and you could move it around and draw it in a different place, but you're going to be drawing the same triangle when it comes down to it, which means this is a congruency law because it's a unique construction of triangle. Um, now, the reason SSS, sorry, SSA isn't a congruency law is because it doesn't always create a unique triangle. For example, here's a 6, 8, 42, so SSA triangle, and that's great, except there's another way to draw a 6, 8, 42 triangle that isn't just a reflection or a rotation. It's completely different, and here it is, right? So this is a non-rule because they're not always a unique construction. Now, the key there, the key word there, there is always, because we saw in the last video that there are cases in which SSA does create a unique construction. Now, we know it doesn't always do it, which is why it's a non-rule, but sometimes it does, and we're just going to unpack in a lot of detail in this video, exactly when it does that. Now, we saw one case in the last video. Um, so we saw if the angle in SSA is greater or equal to 90, the triangle is unique. Um, so, so this was the example I gave. And uh, to, to show that this is unique, what you do is you just do sine rule. Uh, you can see in the last video for a more detailed discussion about this, but you just do sine rule. Um, you find your principal solution. You then say, all right, there might be another solution. I'll go into the sine graph to find it. Um, and when you do go into the sine graph to find it, you notice the sine graph always gives you one acute angle. It always gives you one angle less than 90 because it's reflective in this line here. It always gives you one acute angle and one obtuse one. But if you've already got an obtuse angle, an angle bigger than 90 in your triangle, then you can't have another, right? Because the angles in the triangle out of 20, you can't have two obtuse angles. Um, so if you've got an angle that's already obtuse, SSA is, is a perfectly good congruency law. Um, it always makes a unique triangle. Uh, so are there other cases then in which SSA also is known to give uniqueness every time? Well, okay, what about this triangle here? Now, this is not bigger than 90, this angle here. It's not bigger or equal to 90, it's less than 90. So we're expecting us to give, get two, two solutions for this angle if we, if we try to find it by a sign um, and therefore give us a non-unique construction. But if we actually do it, if we actually try... Um, we find that the other solution, we get a principal solution of 68 after we do some sine rule. The other solution is way over here at 142, which is still too big. Right? So this is actually a unique trim triangle. It's SSA, angle less than 90, but it's still unique. Um, and I mean, I guess maybe that's because 80 is quite close to being obtuse. Like it's, it's quite a big angle. It doesn't leave too much room for error in the other two angles. Like they've got to be quite small as well. But what about this triangle? Like, this is about as far from being obtuse as possible. Um, let's do some sine rule on this triangle to find this angle over here, or 8 over sine 10, or sine 10 over 8, whatever you want to do. Get through the sine rule, put it into the graph to find the other solution. And what we find is the other solution ends up being way too big. Like, if you've got your principal solution of 7.5, which looks about right, the other solution is 180 minus that, which is 172.5, which is too big because this angle is already 10, and that makes 182.5 in total. So the fact, even though this angle is very small, like very small, we still have a unique triangle here. Um, so we need to think more about just the angles in the SSA case. It, it must have more to do than just that. Um, it must be to do with the lengths as well, since those are the only other things that determine what the triangle looks like. It must have something to do with the lengths. Okay, now let's label this, this triangle S1, S2, A. And now I'm going to consider the S1, S2, A triangle. And I'm also only going to consider A when A is acute because I know if A is bigger than 90, the triangle is unique anyway. So I'm just considering a small uh, acute A here between 0 and 90. Um, and now I've labeled these sides because, like I just said, I think the relationship between the two sides is really what determines whether or not this triangle is, is, is unique or not. Um, so that's investigate how the relationship between these two sides um, changes 
how this triangle behaves. And to do that, I'm not going to do any sign wall or any trig graphs or anything like that. I'm going to go much more old school and just do proper construction. Like we've been talking about constructions a lot. So let's actually do it properly uh, with like some compass and stuff. Now I'm not going to do that because I live in the year 2021. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use GeoGebra. And what I've done here is I've created an angle that's less than 90 here, a length that's fixed at 10 here, and a length that's fixed at 9 here. So I can move these around in circles, but there is always a length 9, this is always a length 10. And the reason I've gone with 9, 10a is because that's the, the example you're looking at here. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm going to say, well, where can I put this length such that I make a triangle, right? Like this isn't a triangle, um, and nor is this, right? Um, I mean, this is, but that's not a length of nine. So the length has to hit the end of the line, right? So where can I do this? Well, I can do it here. There's a length of nine. So this is a nine, 10, a triangle. Or I can swing it all the way down and make this triangle, this very small triangle in here, nine, 10, a triangle. So I make a non-unique triangle when I have the, these two lengths and this angle. Um, the angle being irrelevant, it's just an acute angle. But if you have nine, 10, then you make um, a unique, uh, a non-unique triangle. You have two different solutions here. Okay, so what if I were to change the nine? Um, what if I were to change the nine? And what if I were to change the nine to an 11? Now, when I swing this round, I, I can find one triangle up here that I can make, right? The 11, 10, A triangle. Now, when I swing this round to try and make another one, because 11 is bigger than 10, I never actually meet it down here, right? Um, and so I never actually make a second triangle, right? The construction here is unique. There's no other place I can put it. Um, and so, and, and this would work even if you made 11, like 50, you, you'd have to go really high up here to make a triangle, but it would still be a unique triangle. If S1 is bigger than S2, then you make a unique triangle, regardless of what A is. If S1 is bigger than S2, because you can't draw a thing down here, um, you make a unique triangle. Now, what about if S1 is equal to S2, well, this might be quite an obvious case, but uh, when you're a mathematician, it's often just about being thorough. If S1 is equal to S2, then you, okay, you make this triangle up here, and this triangle down here doesn't work because you're just making like a line, right? You're not making a real triangle. Um, so when S1 is equal to S2, you also make a unique triangle, and SSA also holds. Um, so SSA holds if S1 is bigger than S2, it holds when S1 is equal to S2, it doesn't hold when S1 is less than S2. Right, because then you swing this around, you get one solution, two solutions. And we can see this if we if we use a slightly smaller line, like if we use the line length eight, so S1 still being less than S2, we end up with this triangle, or we end up with this triangle. Right, so it's tempting to say, okay, well, if S1 is bigger, then you have, uh, then you have uniqueness. If S1 is smaller, then you don't have uniqueness. Except again, mathematicians all about being thorough. Let's keep going. Let's get a bit smaller than this. Let's go all the way down to a length of six. And now the problem here is when you have a length of six, this short boy here, he can't even reach the line, right? We don't even make a triangle. Um, and this is called the triangle inequality. You can look it up, but we, we can't make a triangle here. Um, and like whether or not we can make a triangle depends what this angle is, right? If this angle was smaller, then this length would have to be shorter to get to this line. Um, so it does depend on the angle, but exactly how does it depend on the angle? Well, again, another thing you want to do when you're a mathematician is think about boundary cases. So what is the boundary case? Like, what length would you have to be to go from being able to touch the line twice even to being able to not touch the line at all? Um, so where was I touch the line twice, for example, there? So we went from being able to touch the line twice to not being able to touch it at all. Where was, where's the kind of crossover? Well, the crossover is when you're just long enough to reach the line at a 90 degree angle, when you can just reach far enough just to touch the line here once, and that's important, and you're just about to reach it with a 90 degree angle. Now, the reason that it's important that it touches it once is because, think about this, this is another unique case, right? If S1 is just long enough to touch this line, then it's only gonna touch it in one place, and therefore you've got a unique triangle again. So you went from having a unique triangle when S1 was really long, right, when it was like 11, to a unique triangle, to a non-unique triangle, when you had like a length of eight, back to a unique triangle again. So you went unique when S1 was really long, non-unique when S was eight, and then back to uh, back to a unique one when, um, when S1 is exactly this length, right? 
Um, so, okay, and then when it's shorter than this length, as we said, when it's shorter than this length, you, you don't even make a triangle. Right? Um, you don't even make a triangle. Right? So let's, let's summarize all of that knowledge then. Um, so what we can say is, if we've got a S1, S2, A triangle, if A is bigger than each 90, it's unique. That's, that was last video's work. We used the trigger graphs to do that. Uh, you got unique. Now, if, S, if A is less than 90, we have a bunch of things on S1 and S2. Now, if S1 is bigger than S2, or equal to, remember, we, we also have the equal to case. If S1 is bigger than or equal to, it's unique, right? It only crossed it at one point up here. It couldn't come back down and cross it over here because it was too long, right? So that implied congruency. Now, I don't know why I've written down another line here because this line is the same as this line, right? This should be a, a strictly greater than sign, I guess, for this table to make sense. That should just be a strictly greater than sign. That's really annoying that I've messed that up. Um, but if S1 was equal to S2, again, it was a unique case. Now, if S1 was less than S2, there were some points where we would swing round and hit it twice until we got to the point where we were only just long enough to reach it and tip it like this here. And what length is this? Well, thankfully, this is just a right angle triangle, so I can find out sine A is equal to S1 over S2 times both sides by S2. And we find that if, sine, if S1 is equal to S2 sine A, then we just about reach it and tip it one place. So if S1 is less than S2, but bigger than S2 sine A, that's when we can reach around and tip it in two places. That's when we swing around and tip it in twice. If S1 is between S2, less than S2, but bigger than this. And that's a non-unique construction. Now, if S1 was equal to this, exactly this case here, if S1 is equal to this, um, then that's unique, right? That's just a right angle triangle, it's unique, uh, and therefore implies congruency. And finally, if S1 is less than this, if S1 isn't even this length here, it's less than that, we, we don't even make the triangle. Um, so, so it's not even a case. Um, and this is really interesting to me because I, I think this breaks down, and again, this, this sign should be just strictly greater than, but I think this breaks down exactly when the SSA rule is unique or non-unique, and therefore whether it implies congruency or not. And what's interesting to me is there's only one case in which it doesn't. Um, so when you're in GCSE, you learn that SSA isn't a rule, you're only learning that because of this single case here. It's fine everywhere else. It's just this single case. And I guess this case here where it's not even a triangle, I guess. Um, but yeah. Okay. So now that we've learned that, um, we, we can move on to the, 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 the game show that is sweeping the nation, uh, which is, is this a unique triangle? Um, so I'd recommend you pause the video and play along. Um, is this a unique triangle? The 8762. Is, is that a unique triangle? Well, here are all of our cases, right? So S1 is 8, S2 is 7, and the angle is 62. But S1 is bigger than S2. Um, so, so we're in this case. It's unique. Perfect. Well done if you got that. Round number two. Is this a unique triangle? The 6756 triangle. Well, S1 is 6, S2 is 7, reading around. So S1 is less than S2. Now, is it bigger than S2 sine A? Well, S2 sine A is 7 sine 56, which is that. So it's in between the two, right? S1 is in between S2 and S2 sine A. So this is a non-unique case. Uh, and the other option to draw it is looks a bit like this. Um, so yeah, we're going to go that one. Last round, is this a unique triangle? Well, actually, this one's pretty easy because uh, the angle is, is just bigger than 90. Um, so so yeah, it's unique. Um, so yeah, really well done if you, uh, if you got that. Um, I think I can stop talking about triangle currency now, um, or at least I very much hope so.